And the Nigerian Senate has officially approved its 2025 to 2027 MTEF, that's the Medium Term Expenditure Framework, setting the stage for a 47.9 trillion Naira budget proposal for 2025. According to a report, the proposed budget includes 16.4 trillion allocated to capital products, 14.2 for recurrent expenditure. And this 2025 through 2027 Medium Term Expenditure Framework serves as a guide for budgeting and economic planning but over the next three years. By approving it, the Senate has agreed to the fiscal and economic assumptions within in the framework. The nation's budget, of course, is predicated on this framework. From Nigeria, heading over to South Africa, let's take a look at the latest uh, GDP figures for the third quarter. <clears throat> 0.3% year-on-year. Estimates are ranging from about 1.1%. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, it did contract by 0.3%. Uh, Q2 was 0.4%. let us talk about uh, what went into that. We have uh, Yvonne Mango, who is an Africa economist uh, at uh, Bloomberg, joining us from Johannesburg. Uh, good afternoon to you, Yvonne. Thanks for joining us. Um, we saw a big contraction in agriculture to the tune of about 28%. Can you talk to us about you know, what happened there? So Southern Africa has been experiencing a drought, a Nina related drought, um, since um, the end of last year. And indeed, we had expected agriculture uh, not to do as well as it did previously. But I must say the, the depth of the contraction was a surprise. Um, it turned the growth forecast negative, as you saw. The market was anticipating growth of around 0.4% quarter and quarter. But instead, we had a contraction of 0.3%. And that was largely due to what happened in the agriculture sector. Are these factors that led to the contraction in agriculture, do you expect that to remain in place for the foreseeable future? Not in agriculture. Um, we do think that's one off. While we may still get some weakness in the sector in the fourth quarter, we don't expect that to persist into 2025, in part because uh, the expectation now is that we get better rains. I think the current weather pattern is La Nina, so we are expecting a pickup in this sector. Um, so, no, we don't expect this um, decline to persist. Uh, what about transport, storage, and communications? We did see a, a contraction there uh, as well. What would you attribute? to that. There seems to have been some slowdown in the trade sector. We saw it both in the import and export numbers both declined. I think that contributed uh, to the underperformance of the transportation sector. However, once again, that's not expected to persist. If anything, we are seeing reforms take place in the logistics sector and the trajectory going forward is for the sector to pick up in terms of activity. Now, on the expansion side, uh, we did see you know, financial services uh, growing by about 1.3%. Uh, and we've, there's been a whole lot of talk, of course, around you know, rate cuts and, and so on and so forth. What, what do you think you know, uh, supported financial services uh, growing in the third quarter? So yes, uh, we, we have a, a relatively uh, more favorable um, um, environment with rates falling since September. Inflation is sitting below the target band at this point in time. So yes, uh, that would support activity in the financial services uh, sector. So I think you're seeing some of that uh, reflecting in those numbers. Now, uh, on to household consumption. Uh, in the third quarter, we saw recreation up by 1.2%, restaurants and hotels, food and non alcoholic beverages. Is the South African consumer getting a bigger wallet as the year comes to a close? So one of the positives, uh, which was masked by yesterday's numbers, is that demand is actually picking up. Uh, we started seeing it, particularly in household consumption, from the second quarter. Um, the sector started growing after declining for uh, the previous few quarters. Uh, we saw that growth persist in the third quarter, uh, albeit softer, but it, uh, the indications are there that household consumption is recovering. The other uh, thing to point out is gross capital formation, which is, uh, or gross fixed capital formation, which is investment, grew for the first time after declining in the previous uh, four quarters. So that for us was encouraging. It suggests or it affirms this positive sentiment we are seeing following the formation of of the government of national unity and it looks as though um, investors are, are back and now uh, putting their money into um, South Africa and we expect that to be sustained.
First off, I want to put up this chart. I'm really impressed with how inflation has decelerated in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the year, I think headline was about 5.3 in January. It's come down to about 2.8. Uh, food year on year from 7.2 in January to about 3.6. Uh, can, can you talk about, the, I guess, what has led to the deceleration uh, in inflation in South Africa and then whether or not you expect whatever reasons you bring up to continue? So the slowdown is largely due to food and fuel prices. Uh, with regards to food, we're coming off a high base from a year earlier, so that helped in terms of uh, the deceleration of food inflation. Uh, fuel prices, we've had quite a, um, a few um, fuel price cuts during the co course of the year, also helped by the fact that um, international um, oil prices have been uh, relatively moderate and also the um, RAND strengthening, particularly in this, uh, from the second half of the year, and that helped support this um, softening in uh, fuel prices that we've seen. So food and fuel driving that slowdown with regards to the outlook, we're expecting um, inflation to remain below the uh, midpoint of our inflation target. South African inflation target is three to 6%. So I'm talking about below 4.5% over the next several months. Now, um, do you also expect, I guess, that, I mean, you're, you're obviously not Lesetha Haniego, but I mean, with the, the, the um, you've seen holds, rate cuts in South Africa, would, you, would that, you know, continue at that pace if inflation continues to decelerate? We are expecting a couple more rate cuts. Um, yes, indeed, given where inflation's at, there's certainly scope for a further um, loosening of monetary policy. Um, so yes, in the first half of the year, we do expect uh, the cutting cycle to continue. All right. Now, um, look, there's a there's a new sheriff in town in America, and so we're we're factoring that question, <laughs> that that fact, in whenever we ask our economists to give an outlook for their respective regions in 2025. How mm -hmm. how do you see things playing out in South Africa in 2025, considering, okay. you know, Trump and everything. So look at the impact of trade. I think the most vocal thing Trump has talked about is tariffs. Uh, we looked at what that would mean uh, for South Africa, particularly if they impose a 60% tariff on the uh, on China and uh, 20 percent on um, other um, the other trade partners in the rest of the world. Our analysis shows that the impact will be marginal. It's marginal negative impact over the next three years. We're talking about 0.1 percent of GDP in terms of impact of such tariffs being imposed. Um, and the sector that would be most affected would be mining, uh, particularly on the export um, and employment um, side. Um, I guess the other um, issue to be concerned about is if there are tariffs. The concern is if those are passed through past through to uh, the cost is passed through to the consumer is that um, price gains remain uh, relatively strong. If that uh, is the case, then interest rates remain high for longer. So that could keep borrowing costs on the continent um, elevated, uh, we think, during a Trump presidency. It's going to be a fascinating year ahead. We always enjoy you coming on to share your knowledge with us. Yvonne Mango, Africa economist at Bloomberg, joining us on Johannesburg. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.